Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys. You need to do this intro with me. I go T. N. You guys got to do the N. Oh. 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 <laughs> we go. Okay, we can try that again. We can try. I forgot to give you the brief before. Okay, you guys ready? Welcome back to another episode of T. T. N. Oh. oh. <laughs> as, as you can you see. Do know. Yeah, you, you know this guy. Yeah, I flip and love the TNO intro, dude. It is so rad, man. I've told you this before, and it is so cool. It's so catchy, man. I dig it. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Rick, is, is it catchy enough for you? Eh? Absolutely, eh? man. I was just sitting there when that TNO came on fire. I was like, wow, this is production <laughs> value right here. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we need to talk to the guys at LaRue and see if it's up to their standard. Maybe we can sneak it in after credits or something. I don't know. Anyway, okay, guys, we, 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 we've got Rick Devins in the house and we've got him in the house because we know Dino is a huge fan and we just thought, well, how do we do this? How do we wrap up, wrap up his survivor journey? And, you know, it had to be that's me, Rick. So, I mean, you guys might as well say hi. Apparently, you know each other. I don't know what the story is behind that. I'm just trying to steal Dino's shine here, you know? She knows Dino's moment in the sun, and I'm just coming in <laughs> out of the shadows, <laughs> trying to get a little bit of it. Batman vibes. No, no, no. no. It's all good. Flipping. Anybody knows me knows I love Rick Devins, and um, Rick was actually a part of my journey onto Survivor in some quirky, gimmicky way. Um because I know like LaRue loves Rick as well and Rick loves LaRue. So I decided to incorporate him in my, my, my audition video in like a very gimmicky way where basically it was a shout out to me to get onto the show, but it was actually just two minutes of Rick telling LaRue how much he loved him. So I'm not complaining. It works. I'm happy. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, we, we've actually been chatting, chatting since and uh, so grateful for that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's awesome story. And that just shows you Dino was playing the game before he was actually playing the game. And uh, so it's been, it's been a long, long time. It worked for you, Dino. But what I like about this today is because TNO is always, we're always different from 1v1 v, one sort of conversations to 2v1. And today we've got a player who was on the island. We've got one who also played in the previous lifestyle in a, in a different format in the U.S., and then we're going to assess the show today. So we're getting all different perspectives, and that's what I'm super excited about. But to start off with, Rick and Dino, but mainly Rick in terms of right now, you have your pre-match rituals. I know you're quite a sports fan too, but what was your pre-match ritual coming to Survivor and the same going for Dino? How did you – Did you, I'm sure you guys spoke in that process and trying to assist, assist Dino there with preparing mentally for the season. No, I didn't uh, give Dino any advice going into the season other than what I gave all of them, actually. Uh, I, Dino can shed light. I gave advice to all the castaways. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, we, <laughs> got, we, got, the most amazing, we, we got the most amazing video from, from a list of geez, incredible survivor royalty um, that we got to watch um, before before the game just to hype us up and... and yeah, give us some like advice and and Rick was a firm favorite. His video was like obviously a massive favorite of of the castaways. So we're so grateful that like we, we had that like insights and I think it did just enough and it, it and it contributed to why people came out the gates playing so hard. It's because we had like these legends telling us like go out there and and, and play hard and have fun and we're like okay cool we'll do exactly that, <laughs> Lord Rick. You know, <laughs> so it's amazing, man. Yeah, well, that's one thing you all have done so far is played really, really hard. Yeah. One of the things, I know we're going back to the sort of pre-game advice. You guys, uh, Rick did a, a show the other day about analytics and survival. In terms of the prepare, uh, preparation, we've had Carla on, we've had Teresa on, and the other uh, castaways to get the boot. They all said there's only so much preparation you can do, but once you get thrown into the deep end, it's just sink or swim. So a question to you, Dino, in terms of you sinking or swimming, how much of the preparation did you actually carry through into your game or did it just go out of the water as soon as you hit the ground? Ha! <laughs> um, no, I, I, I 
I did a lot of like puzzle prep. Um, as you could tell, I didn't use the the period of lockdown to get abs like the other guys. I, I got <laughs> a bit chunky in that lockdown period, um, which I would argue worked to my advantage in some aspects. Um, in terms of the mental prep and and you know the thoughts I had about the game going into the game, um, I really wanted to keep an open mind and not not narrow myself down to a specific strategy because I was always like, you need to be adaptable. You need to be adaptable. Um, but even so, there were still things I didn't consider. So. Um, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the books I'd read, a lot of the meditations I'd done, that all went out the window the moment I got there because I was just so excited. <laughs> yeah, well, you weren't the only one. And Rick, please do not be afraid to ask Dino any questions because I know you're following the season as well and you were worried that I nearly gave the spoiler away as to who the boot was and luckily I didn't. <laughs> but yeah, please feel free to ask him questions as well with regards to anything. Yeah, Dino, man, the one thing I want, obviously, like every time I watch any Survivor now, I look at it through the lens of my own experience and I just look at you as like the perfect candidate for an edge of extinction season like if only <laughs> if only you were on the island with the other people who'd been eliminated with just a challenge between you and getting back um uh. but like your elimination reminded me so much of when I was voted out fourth because it came right after a tribe swap uh, yours was different than mine because you ended up with all different people. I miraculously ended up with the exact same people. But going into the tribal, it's like I knew there was a really good chance I was the target. But I knew there was an equally good chance that one other person could have been the target. So if I had run around looking for an idol scrambled, it, clearly I would have become the target unless I found something. What is that kind of exactly what you were going through? Dude, I'm so glad you mentioned that because I feel like somebody can relate to this because it almost looks like I, I, I kind of like just petered out and did nothing. But I felt like at that stage doing what is perceived as nothing was my best chance because, as you say, like I knew that there was this this target on me, but I had just enough of a relationship with, with Kieran in particular to feel like they will work with me. And I'd, I'd done enough work with them to feel like there's a reason for them to trust me, right? And... I didn't want to run around and scramble and completely ruin that and become the main target because now they don't trust me. So I was too scared to maybe speak to Santini because I didn't want to risk, you know, anything potential that I had, any potential I had with um, Kieran and Tyson. I did still look for an idol, but I knew my odds were slim because of the time period we had out, been out there for. I hadn't been to Munity Island. I hadn't gotten any clues. I knew that the clue people, other people knew about the clue and the odds of somebody not having found it was very, very low. So I did look, but but um, at that stage, I just felt it was too far gone. Um, but I did it on the slide very, very quietly because there was definitely no ways I wanted to be caught. So I'm glad you brought it up and, and you can relate to some, to some extent. I mean, at, at some stage, you just don't want to make a bad case worse in a way. And you want that little chance that you do have to be the best possible chance you have. Yeah, totally. It's like if you find the idol at Salvation – but if, you, if they know that you're out there looking, then all of a sudden it's either find it or you go home for sure. So I, I totally understand that. And I know you and I actually briefly talked about this, but when you saw Santini get up at Tribal, in your head you had to go, she's going for an idol. Is there any part of you that wanted to just like jump up and knock her out no. of the way? <laughs> <laughs> proper it's proper so tackle, funny. man. There were so many things in my bag, and I thought about this after my elimination. There were so many things in my bag that I could have just whipped out in the moments and been like, no, wait, Santini, wait, before you do that, I picked up this advantage. We need to speak about this before you do that because you can save us both and make my way to her and sneak my hand in before hers. You know, like I've definitely thought about that, but it wasn't in the moment. I actually thought to myself at that stage, um, because of the the, um, the 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 order that we we went up to vote in and the body language of Kieran coming back from the voting urn, I already knew that I was getting four votes. Um, so when Santini went and got up to play, play the idol, I actually felt bad for her. I was like, there's no ways I was going to talk her out of it. So I didn't even bother like saying, Hey Santini, like don't stress, save it for yourself. I'm going home because I knew she wouldn't believe me. Um, so I, I was actually immensely frustrated at myself because that tribal council I spent with my head like on a swivel looking for where an idol could be because I know South Africa loves hiding idols at tribal council. And I was thinking like Henry from Australian Survivor where it was behind a, um, one of the torches and I was like, it's got to be here somewhere. And, I, and you know, um, 
I, I was frustrated that there was this inkling inside me that there was an idol there and there was an idol and I didn't get it, you know. So it was a little bit like there were just so many emotions that happened in that moment. But, I mean, geez, so there was nothing much I could do. Yeah. So, so what are you thinking now when you're looking back knowing that there was or there is now that we're watching it, but there was an idol hidden hidden at immunity there? You just go, damn, you sh should have just gone for broke at that moment when you saw her playing hers. You should just be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you guys read, I just, I'm just going to start scrambling. Because your yeah, face, I mean, man, your face was painting a thousand, pic like so many pictures there. I was just felt for you. I was like, oh, man, this guy knows. He knows. Like you could see the journey of emotions on my face. So I'm actually quite glad that, that they – it, it, it captured like what I was going through. It really was an accurate reflection of what I was feeling. So, I mean, yeah, there, there's a million things that go through your head. There was like this, oh, dude, you're going home, accept it, whatever. And then it's like, but what can you do? And then it's like, oh, you can't do anything. And then, and then you start getting ideas, but then it's too late. And next thing you know, you're standing there because busy stuffing your torch, your torch with like this <laughs> like wry, grim smile or whatever you want to call it. And you're like, I love yeah. you, Nico, but. Uh, not that much right now you know so, <laughs> but even when that happened though do you know even when that happened you were so happy about the whole like well, you weren't happy but you, you shrug it off like a good person like a good oak a good man you know and the question i've got you did a lot of things throughout your journey on survivor which just painted so many targets on your back but yeah. how much of that was you just being dino versus dino playing the game and everyone else just misreading that because again, similar to what Rick did, Rick, I mean, you you were also a super, super awesome dude, came across like just being yourself and that being super nice, almost, you know, also painted a target on your back. Um, yeah, so, I mean, going into the game with the reputation I had, it didn't matter what I did, um, it would be bad for me. If I did something good, uh, you know, I think I think the other castaways gave me way too much credit, you know, <laughs> way more credit than what I deserved because they thought I was like, playing like other level mind games you know i was just going about my everyday business doing things they were like ah he's done this because he's shady ah he shared a reward because he's shady ah he shared his jacket because he's shady ah he you know like anything i did literally anything there'd be a negative spin to it and a reason to make that target even bigger dude <laughs> so i mean being out there like sharing rewards and um just sharing jackets and those human moments and just having a good laugh and I've got a self-deprecating sense of humor. And I, I think obviously, I mean, she's the master of that is Rick himself, you know? Um, and even that people are like, oh, you know, it's just trying to minimize his threat, but it's just how I go through life, you know? So it was very much me, dude. Yeah. And you know, I, I, it's amazing how hindsight is 2020 and probably the first thing that you were really criticized for <clears throat> in playing was trying to communicate with the other team and tell them you were in trouble. Right. And yet, if that had worked and they'd sent you to Immunity Island, you probably would have known where that hidden idol was. You would have had the two idols at two different camps. Like, you never had an opportunity to get those idols. Just the way that gameplay is. I, I guess, you know, you could argue that everyone has a chance to go. But all the idols I played correctly anyway. Like, I got the half idol for coming back. But all the other yeah. ones were open to everybody. Like, they were on the island. Is it... And you're someone who loves the game, respects the game. You understand it has to evolve. It has to have these things. But, like, is it frustrating that you never really had the opportunity at the at, at those idols? Like, you couldn't have gotten those clues? Um, you, you can't be frustrated at the way the game works. I mean, the game's got to change yeah. season to season, right, for, for it to remain interesting, you know. So, so I'm a big, big advocate for, you know uh, – production doing what they do to develop the show i did find it strange that you know there was one person that legitimately had all three clues or, or, or the, the the there was potentially one person who had the information to all three idols and it could have just lived with them and died with them you know that information yeah. um in something so i did find that that interesting right and I, I don't know if production expected that to happen where it just so happened that Santini, who won the clue to the idol, which would have been at both camps, that she was savvy enough to go and find that other clue at Community Island. I think perhaps, you know, with a bit of reflection, I'd say that that one that was found um, at Immunity Island, not the one that was earned, but the one that was found, perhaps that could have been found somewhere else in the game, giving every other castaway an equal chance to, to get hold of that clue, you know, yeah. um, and not only the people going to Immunity Island three days apart, you know. So, I mean, maybe maybe you can look at it that way, but 
I'm not, I'm not I'm not about to sit here and criticize uh, production because I can only imagine the, the thought uh, behind it. And oh my gosh! What goes into it, and we've got honestly, our production is in like the safest hands possible. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. I, it's so true. And I agree 100. The pr- the production's amazing, and then Santini, all credit to her for maximizing you know her opportunity in that way, which other players had already not. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, fair enough, guys. And I think that's a, some valid points in terms of the production and one of the, the game mechanics in terms of how they're handling this. I do think Kilkhart's asking this question, though, saying, asking Rick, watching the SA versions and this current season more specifically, how does it differ from the US gameplay? It, it really is super similar in terms of the gameplay. I mean, Last last season, you know, you could have argued like these pe- these folks haven't caught up with U.S. gameplay. Like yeah. they shouldn't be falling for for Rob in, in all his glory that way. But this season, I mean, everyone is playing. It reminds me so much of a U.S. game. It actually reminds me a lot of, uh, and this is a huge compliment to the cast. Like it reminds me of a returnee game where yeah, wow. nobody's wasting any time. Like people are really getting after it. Um, I love that so much. One thing that is really interesting to me, and Dino, you can correct me if I'm wrong. You guys have the immunity challenge, and then you don't go to tribal that night. You have like a whole nother day and then go to tribal. Yeah. So I mean that's that's not a usual um game mechanic, if you will. It's 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 because of immunity island, right? It gives that opportunity for that person to right. stay and play. So it's as a result of the immunity island twist that this happens. But I mean, I think I think it's 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 great because it gives you that 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 day and a half actually gives so much more time to really change things if you need to change things and really like so much you you know, Rick, so much changes in a day. Yeah. Now you've just gone from half a day to scramble for a a, 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 a tribal council to three times that amount of time. You know, so many things yeah. can change. So. In that respect, I think it's 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 so great and refreshing, and it, it really did, I think, level some sort of the playing field. Yeah, I think that's really that's probably why there's a lot more like whispering and jumping around at tribal council, because because we do have such short amount of time that you know, a, an actual strategy is to just like take an important away a vote away from the game with you for like three hours and not even let anyone get a chance to talk to him. You know, that's not going to happen in, in the amount of time you have. So that, that has, I'm sure, even though that's just because of immunity Island, that that's got to have a significant uh, change on the gameplay. Uh, then immunity Island, obviously not knowing what the person's going to do changes it. But I think the way you guys are reacting to it, like, I don't think it's any different than us players. Like, I think we're all playing the same game at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and I just love how this cast is getting after it specifically. Yeah. I think Joseph, he's come out saying that he's not missing the survivor us right now because it's thanks to survivor SA. And again, credit to, to yeah. the production for getting on schedule and getting ahead of everyone else and figuring out a way to make it happen. Again, just keeping in, in, in theme of the game mechanics, Dino, it just felt to me, you just didn't matter what you did. It didn't matter how it played out. You were just, unfortunately, you literally got the wooden spoon of survival in terms of luck with regards to the mechanic of just the tribe shuffles. I mean, three tribe shuffles before getting to merge. Huge, huge significance in terms of how it plays out from a social dynamic. I think personally, I mean, my opinion is it's great because it, it prevents a pagonging, pagonging from happening. That's the one thing because new social bonds are formed and then it just keeps changing, but you just get finding yourself on the wrong end. And how significant <laughs> do you think it was or how detrimental do you think it was to your game personally? I, I think, look, first of all, I think uh, the, the tribe swaps came at an awesome time in the game. The first one caught us all completely, completely off guard. I was expecting it the following immunity challenge or the following reward challenge, you know. Um, so the first tribe swap came at such a cool time and um, I think it, it mixed up the game at a nice time. I mean, you've just had a couple of days with these people, you build a bit of a relationship, but it's not that long that, you know, it's I'm going to stick with you to the end guaranteed because now you're about to go spend an even longer period of time with new people and that's going to like throw up questions about your older lines and your lines. So I think it just keeps the game so fluid. Um, and I anticipated that that swap when it happened. Um, I thought it was going to happen at our, our, the second swap. 
I thought it was going to happen at the reward challenge. And then when it didn't happen, then I knew. And I even said before the the the, um, the immunity challenge, I just said, tribe swap's happening. You know, I knew it um, because it just made sense. And even though it didn't work out in my favor, I think I think it was great. It, it, it keeps the game, keeps mixing the game up. It, it gives the players who are at the, potentially at the bottom a chance to get their, get their way to the top, you know, and uh, like I say, it keeps the game fluid. So I'm a huge advocate for the way production's done that this year and I'm, uh, I'm a huge supporter of it and I think that's one of the reasons why the game is so great. Okay. I mean, Hilgaard's asking the question, Kian was the only player that seemed to have your back thus far. Was she just on the outs as you were? That's... It's, it's, it's a weird one, right? Looking back, Kian, I didn't get great vibes from from the onset. Um, and although I had been honest with her, I didn't feel particularly close to her. And um, I think in Vuna 2.0, she climbed the the ladder to be ahead of me in the pecking order with everyone except for maybe Rene. So, you know, she had endeared herself to Marisha and Nicole. And I think Marisha and Nicole felt like she was a guaranteed vote. There was like speculation around me. I was a bit less guaranteed. So... Um, she was on the outs, definitely, but um, I think she had she'd climbed ahead of me. And it's funny that you say she was the only one that had my had my back. You know, um, I don't think she did entirely have my back. There was there was uh, whispers of her having thrown my name out at Vuna 2.0. You know, um, which is why I didn't have an issue with with telling uh, Tyson and Kieran that I was happy to go for her at Vuna 2.0, and again at at, at Zumba 3.0. So. Um, it's a shame because Kian and I actually, I didn't even realize this at the time. We were at Finale together last year. We partied with the same people. We were in the same photos and I had no flipping idea, you know. And had we maybe connected <laughs> on day one, maybe I would have found my number one alliance member that I was I was so craving. Maybe it was there in front of me all the time and and we could have created something great together, but I, I was just too blind to it. Okay. You spoke about coming in with a reputation before you played. How how did you get this reputation? I mean, it sounds like you were partying with others previous seasons. That I mean, that doesn't help. But how? What else did you do that gave you this reputation that people all knew you before you stepped onto the island? And then so, also I mean, after I, that, sorry, follow up question. There was a question about asking the the, the move with Paul and um, Rick. You, you mentioned you touched on the fact that um, you know he reaches out if this works in his favor. It's a good thing. But obviously it backfires, and that's the risk that you take with it. But what was the Paul connection, and obviously you coming in with all the risk? Sorry, um, my, my phone just did something weird with sound. Um, so so to, to go back to your first question, uh, what, what, what I did was, I mean, I, I started getting involved with the survivor community, you know, about two or three years ago. So, I mean, you and I have crossed paths a number of times, and it's been rad. So, um you know, I got involved in the fan forums and, you know, any fans who like lurked and there were a couple of them from our season would have seen my name pop up there. I played in one, like an online org last year, which was like a lot of fun. And people noticed that I was at the finale, season seven finale. I won tickets through, through steers to go to the season seven finale. Um, and people knew that. So um, when I was recognized, when I landed there moment one, um, I was recognized by a couple of super fans. And while my, my argument was, well, if they're big enough fans to know who I am, then they're also a threat, you know, like the target mm. was, was put on me by, by the reputation I developed, you know, and there was one person in particular who was not signed, throwing me under the bus from day one. So um, it definitely didn't help my cause. Who, uh, who was, who was it? Yeah. yeah. Tell us, man. You can't just drop the bomb. Jason, and just Jason, I love, I love him. We, we've had, uh, we, 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 we've, we've, um, we had that our worked out moment for Jason. in the show. But um, yeah, it didn't work out for him, unfortunately. I was hoping we'd work together, but it, it... what's that? I'm doing the uh, Rainier. Yeah. I'm pointing. Yeah, he's pointing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, also, do you know? I just um, want to point out, man. This this show, this isn't this isn't an Mnet interview. This is this is an uncut show for the super fans. So you need to you need to just like let it go, man. Like you don't know. You you can say what you need to say. I know you've got NDAs yeah. and things you need to sign, but just let it, just let it flow free. This is a <laughs> nice thera- this is a therapeutic a therapeutic se- session for everyone listening, and or mainly for you. So just see it as that. Yeah. Uh, for sure. So like I said, Jason threw me under the bus, and, and seeing him there when, when I was walking down initially, um, and noticing he was in the line behind me. When Nico said there's a meaning in Nico's up for grabs, I'm like, this guy's on my tribe. I don't know whether he's going to go for me or not. I'm going for that like, like safety. So even though that further put a target on my back there's a part of it that that you know I, I i will i will still back that decision because he did end up throwing me under the bus and i could have been that first boot had i not done that you know so 
um yeah no uh we we've since had a had a good chat and we are um you know we're in a good space and we're good mates now and um we we we, we resolved it and how silly it was to not play together so well, yeah, he's dead know, to me, Dino. Good I'm good. glad you guys resolved it. Jason's dead to me now. <laughs> <laughs> dead to me. <laughs> we're gonna, Rick. We're gonna have to get Jason on here just to so have the chat with you because we've also got a swim off that we need to do. Because the when second he... Jason comes on, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding, Jason. I love you, <laughs> um, Rick. Seeing it from your point of view, and I mean, you had the different game dynamic in terms of edge of extension, extinction, mm-hmm. sorry, seeing Dino play and seeing his journey unfold, what would you have recommended that he do that possibly <laughs> could have kept him in the game a well, little bit it, longer? You know, that's what's so ironic is because the advice I would give him now is exactly opposite of the advice I gave them all in the video, which was, you know, play play hard, play like it's the last chance you're ever going to get and get after it. And Dino did that. So you gave the, so you gave the Al Pacino, Rick, you gave the Al Pacino sort of any given Sunday sort of speech. I got all these guys fired up and they've come out guns. I got him so fired. I told him how much I regretted, like, you know, how full of regret I would have been if I was not on an edge of extinction season. And I'd gone out fourth and I'd gone out too easy. And I said, you know, go for it, get after it. But in hindsight, like Dino just, I mean, God bless you. You got after it. And, and honestly, like, I think it's worth it. Cause I didn't, I love LaRue. I, I hope he sees what I see. I'd invite you back for an all-star season in a second uh, because of everything you showed. Like you get very few characters that are as developed and get as much great TV time as you did. And Carla in, in, in this many episodes. So I think you were amazing, but like, my own experience was after the merge, I became such a big threat. And when you get that, it's just, it's like a stench. It's like so hard to convince people you're not a threat when that comes up. And that came up so much earlier for Dino than it did for me. Um, and then, you know, luckily you, you contributed to some wins for your tribe. So you avoided some tribals. Um, but like, I think he just did so well for his tribe. I just think he he made all these big moves, which were awesome, uh, which are making you a favorite, but they also put a target on him. And when you have that target there, you know, unless you're Tony Vlachos and I still don't know how he did it. It's just really hard to get a target off yourself. So on that note though, I mean, if you guys haven't seen this, Rick does a show with Christian Ubiki and a bunch of other guys, Sophie Wendell, and they talk about analytics and survivor. And Dino, I know you've seen this. Now that you've both played Survivor, and Carla and Teresa said you can't prepare for Survivor up until the point that you've actually played it. Now that you guys have done it, and even though it's always, always different, what is the one key ingredient that should should help someone to get to a certain point? Or is that, me, is, that, is, that, is that just a ridiculous statement? Before Dino gets to this, let me just take a second to welcome Dino to a very strange new world where – he has he's not he's playing survivor right now whether he knows it or not because i think we all agree like dino very possible candidate for an all-star season right so you can't go around and start talking about everything you do i live this every day it's like (laughs) you think about all these things but you don't want to put it out there like i might play again like i'll give you advice that's like obvious but i'm keeping the good stuff for myself (laughs) (laughs) exactly so so dino's got to start playing it all the time every survivor he talks to is going to talk to him as if someday they could have an alliance it's really weird man Oh, I love that, that you mentioned that because um, I'm 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 I may be a little less optimistic about my chances because I've I've done the maths I've looked at all the previous seasons I've looked at us and there's so many great candidates so I'm I'm I'd say I'm realistic about my my chances right um not to say that I, I mean I'd love to go back absolutely I think Boston to... Rob went out seventh his first season Dino I'm just throwing that out there <laughs> just throwing it out there um yeah but the the thing is I have noticed. And I'm not going to throw too much of this out there. I've noticed a lot of pre-gaming within the Survivor community. And you can very quickly feel when, when somebody's there. Names. Give um, us names. Throw it out there. Because we, need to, we need to start following these people. No, no, and start no, seeing no, what they're doing. Throw it out there. I'm going to throw take me. some of Rick's advice here. Hold on. You There's this guy, Claudio, who I know is trying to get on. 
Claudio Bear. I've seen him do a lot of pre gaming. Big target, oh, no, Claudio, sorry. if he gets out there. I thought I thought you'd never heard of a TNO before this. So uh, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for that one. Under the bus. Um, <laughs> no, um, so I have noticed it within the community, and I had a chat with Jacques about this the other day because people have said to Jacques like. Hey, dude, you know, you're doing these like podcasts and, you know, if you go back, it's going to hurt you. Da, 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 da. And, and I love Jacques' approach to this. He's like, you know what? I can't sit and not live my life. And, and I'm now going to miss out on all these other joys that come with, you know, being smart. I, and, I, and I resonate with this because I love being a part of the community. I love speaking to people. I love viewing parties. Um, you know, so I'm not going to stop those things because it might hurt my chance that might never come, you know, sacrifice two or three good years of your life um, integrating into a community that 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 you you love, you sacrifice that for a potential chance of what could possibly be 39 days that even if you try to play perfectly, you might leave after three anyway. Like, so I'm not in that mindset at all. Like I'm, I'm enjoying the people for who they are and, and I'm enjoying survival for what it is. And I don't think I'm about to change that because of this, this thought at the back of my mind. Well, that's the difference between you and I, Dino. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm trying to as soon as this is over, awesome. I'm going in the backyard and looking for hidden immunity idols. <laughs> Only Bloodshot <laughs> style. Just never sleep, never stop, just keep that's going. Right. That's right. No, no, between you and me, Claudio, I'm trying to lull Rick into a false sense of security, knowing uh, that there's going to be an international survivor, and I want him to underestimate me. Yeah. Well, someone, <laughs> someone's thrown that out there. Someone's thrown that out there already. Mitsovetse. Mitsu, Botse, sorry, I missed, I butchered that name. Apologies for that. But yeah, I was saying, imagine castaways, three US, three Australian, three SA tribes, make it happen. How do we make something like that happen? Is that even possible? I know there's like licenses and all these things and obviously conflict of, of interest from a creative perspective. But do you think something like that would be possible in the future? I think so. I think, you know, I think there are so many survivors from each of the countries now uh, that want to play again that aren't getting a shot. Like, I know tons of U.S. survivors just, like, dying to play again. So if they don't get their shot in the U.S. and someone else came along and said, hey, uh, come play here, they'd love to. Much I think Survivor SA is definitely gaining steam, like, as in, like more and more people are watching it. LaRue is... I mean, you can't say enough good things about LaRue and what he's doing for the Survivor community. I discovered Survivor Australia through Survivor SA. Like, I, I was a South Africa guy first. Uh, yeah. So it's my first love as an international season. Like, Nico's my dude, then Jonathan. You know? <laughs> Obviously, Jeff, who I met, is my That's guy, why you're but... on the show, Rick. That's exactly why. Yeah. I mean, we, didn't, we didn't tell him to say this, even though we might have nudged it. But we didn't tell him <laughs> to say it. No. So I think you could find people to play, even if it wasn't for a million dollars. Like, I think there's people yeah. that just... You know, which is what the U.S. plays for. Uh, there's people that just want the adventure again, and if someone was willing to do that, I, you could get players. I don't know, and, and I assume they'd be allowed to play. I don't know what you'd have to go. You might have to name it something different. I don't know about the legal stuff, but you could find the so, players. I'm not. I'm not sure about the the legal stuff. Um, I, I do know that if there's somebody that can get it right, it's Larue. Let's let's be yeah. Let's be the let's be real about that, and. Um, yeah, I, I, I look towards like Australian Survivor Champions vs Contenders one. I think it was where where Russell Hands played in in Australia. Yeah. So yeah. there was already a, a cross pollination there that they got right. So it clearly can be done. I don't know to what extent or what the limits are, but I mean that would be awesome. And, and that's and a perfect know, example I mean, of why you need equal US. Australian and South African folks. I mean, that, that was just odd, right? Just having one American. I mean, that just, it's yeah. the, the concept of survival. And also, I think this is why I like the South African survivor to a certain extent. Dino, on your episode, you had Teresa and Tyson speaking Corsa, I think it was. Different language. I don't think you've, yeah. you've got that to contend with in the US or the other ones. They're all speaking a common language. When you, you throw these different groups of people in, that's kind of what makes it super exciting. So when we do have these different cultures coming in and the mix and the melting pot of just great joys and whatever it is. I don't know. I'm, you, you see where I'm going with this. It just adds an extra dynamic to the game. And also credit to Rick Devins playing the game right now, trying to get onto that first season of International Survivor. Shout out to that. <laughs> no, Rick, Rick sealed. If, if LaRue's got anything to do with it, Rick has sealed his ticket a long time ago, man. So <laughs> if there's an international season and LaRue's got any say in it, boom, we've, we're looking at our... Uh, one of our USA representatives right now. And, and, and I couldn't think of anyone better to rep that. I have not been kissing up this hard to LaRue just to get on the show. I want a statue <laughs> of my head. 
I want to just chill on an island and let oh. people visit me. You know, I just want. I I told Dino yesterday. I was like, I am constantly hounding Larue for just anything I could do on the show, and it's because I'm a fan. Like, it's like I watch The Office and I watch Lost, like walking dead like what would i do to just be like a zombie on walking dead that'd be amazing and that's but how I'm i feel about survivor SA. Like, like i'd do anything i i would i would have like a five second clip of being a zombie there in the back background yeah. and just getting child. like i would live for that I'd that would be it. incredible i don't know you dino i don't know what you would do but that and would I, be phenomenal i was 100 yeah. percent planning on coming to the finale this year you know in south <laughs> africa like larue was gonna put me up like he's the best guy in the world and of course covid took over so hopefully season nine but uh yeah i i'm just such a big fan of the show and and you know, I, I hear from castaways like, oh, thanks for watching and and thanks for talking with us. And it's like, I'm I'm a fan. Like, I'm nerding out. Like, oh, I'm with Dino. You know, I'm with Sandy. <laughs> like, Amy. Like, it's so cool. Okay, I think TNO might have found their new co-host. No, I'm just saying, no pressure. Um, Dino, so he, 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 here's something. <laughs> here's something. Uh, Hilcott asking the question, what do you think made you such a popular preseason favorite winner pick? Because you did. In the fantasy realm of fantasy survivor you you were what favorite you were yeah i, I feel like the biggest con man on earth I, <laughs> I i pulled the wool over like the public's eyes better than i could ever do in the flipping game you know imagine i, I brought that strength of game in, in the level of con manship into into the game no um i think it's because i was a part of the fan community and i was super active on social media so people would be biased towards me you know um, and I knew that and I, and I leaned into it, but it's not like I, I won't say I exploited it because I really enjoyed it and I enjoy speaking to fans. And I know as somebody who's, who's a fan themselves, um, it, it means a lot when you, when you interact with castaways and I don't have that castaway view on myself. I have that really like normal fan view, you know, like I sit and geek out. Like I, I was literally in the game geeking out about how other players were playing the game and going like, Oh my God, this is so amazing. Like, <laughs> The I, moment I, where you're going, I, I, I don't want to vote myself out because I want to see wood. them get to out. Say that again? That moment, like, that moment where you're like, I'm going to go look for wood. That, that was one of those examples where you're like, I'm going to go look for wood. Yeah, he, he went, <laughs> I was like, this, this man's enjoying it so much that even looking for wood is something that is exciting. <laughs> it's exactly that. It's exactly that. So, yeah, man. Um, Pre-game, I think uh, I was just very active and, and even Rick made a comment. He's like, I know you go deep into the game because nobody's this active. I was like, ha! Ah, I'll show you. <laughs> um, That's true. So I, I told that, Dino because the first thing I tell anyone who's on an active season is like, don't tell me. Like, I do not want to know. I'm a fan. I want to watch it. No spoilers. And he's like, of course not. But then after a little while, I messaged him. I was like, you tweet like someone who goes pretty far into the game. <laughs> like people who get off this early <laughs> don't want people to know. Um, and you went deep enough in. But yeah, I did. I told him. I was like, you tweet like a winner. <laughs> So if you if you guys are analyzing and doing the the thing that Rick says always playing, just know if someone's tweeting a lot like Dino is, Dino's really pulled the wool over your eyes. But other people, we know they're going quite far in the game. Just know that. <laughs> That's like part of the reason the winner of my season, Chris Underwood, was such. I mean, there's a lot of reasons it was a big surprise. But when yeah. he got voted off third, like he disappeared from social yeah. media, and everyone was like, he's hiding in his shame. So when he won, everyone was like, what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. uh, Dino, can can you just speak uh, to the point of being a live game escape owner? Because Joseph uh, is asking you, are you really an escape yeah. game owner? And then just talk about the journey, how you got into something like that. How does someone do that? And why did you do that particularly? I know we're eating into sort of a bit of the golden spear time, but we'll we'll move on if everyone's okay with that. But uh, go ahead, Dino. So, yeah, first yeah, thanks, Joseph, for the question. Um, uh about the, the business. Yes, I really do own a live escape game business called Hint Hunt, as Aiden um, has suggested there in the comments. And shout out to Aiden, by the way. Um, he's been following. We've had some really good chats. He's been a really cool fan. And it's like 2.30 a.m. where he is. So he stayed up until all hours of the morning to watch this. So shout out to you, dude. Really appreciate the support. Um, but yeah, escape game business, I was literally sitting in at, at like my prior, prior business and I you know, one of my, my my best mates and I would just constantly send each other ideas back and forth. And the one day he sent me a link to this escape game concept just because he knows I like games and these things. And I was like, holy crap, this is cool. I want to 
do this as a business and <laughs> boom, like <laughs> six months later, that's what I was doing full time as, as a living. I owned an escape game business. So, I mean, it's really like, like I said, it's the final trouble that I sat at. Well, I don't have a plan in life, Nico. And mm-hmm. that's because, you know, things like that tend to work out. You tend to have these like awesome opportunities that come your way. And um, this is one of them. And it hasn't always been easy and particularly not now during COVID, but it's been so rewarding because I absolutely get to love what I do every day. And uh, it's such a privilege. Rick, when we watched Dino play, out of all the people that he played with, who do you think he should have really gone after in making a strong alliance? Uh, I don't. That's that's so tough because all the tribe swaps. It's like you just never know. I think he did a really good job. You know, the the episode Carlos voted out the double. You know, the double uh, elimination episode. Nice cat, beautiful cat. <laughs> I was like. I was like, you know, Dino's trying to play both sides. He's going to get caught. You know, he, he shouldn't be doing this. But then the next episode, it's like, wow, it really, it's a good thing he didn't screw over Kieran and Tyson. Like, that might be what saves him. It just didn't. So, I don't know, man. I think, I, I don't know. I don't know, Steve, Dino. I think you did you well. Know. I think you did your best. You know a Dino lot who, more going on than I did. Dino, who, no, who exactly. looking back, looking back. Who would you have probably spent more time trying to work on? So, I mean, I don't regret um, trying to build a relationship with Renier because he really was such an influential person. And, and he, he, I did pick it up in the game that he had the most connections and the most influence. Um, and he was also the most open to working with me. And I think that's also credit to how savvy he is as a player. But um, I really did get to the point, it was so sad, I really did get to the point where I'd finally built something with Renier, you know, and then I got taken away from him and I just happened to, you know, be behind Anello, who was like one of his number one homeboys, you know, um, which was a bit unfortunate. So, I mean, yeah, I think um, that was a good move. And I think, you know, I definitely, since since this this um, podcast, I think Kian, I mean, that's just something I've always overlooked and something I never considered until now, until we started chatting about it. Like, I, I should have definitely worked on the relationship. I've got a good relationship with her now outside of the game. She's a she's a great person, and um, I think it was definitely a missed opportunity. Hey, Dina, watching it now, it's like you see the little asides and cutaways where people, you know, th- throughout the season, it's kind of a theme, like – your your hands getting caught in the cookie jar a little bit like oh dino wants to go again dino is that did you know that was going on did you know that there was a mm. there was a little bit of a sense that you were trying to uh make too many connections yeah, yeah. i was i was i was actually well aware of it um <laughs> funny enough it doesn't look like i was aware of much but I, I was i was well aware of it i knew that i had this massive target on my back anyway and i quickly figured out that no matter what i did there'd always be a reason to spin that and make a bigger target. If I laid completely low, then absolutely nothing. People would be like, oh, he's scheming something. He's up to something. Target would grow, you know? So I was like, screw this, you know? One, I want to have fun and enjoy the game. And I, and I knew, especially early on in the game, that if anything comes up, if you if you put in the first suggestion, somebody else is going to have to be the one to say no. And nobody wants the one to say no because then they've got to give a reason as to why no. And then that reason is going to expose something about their game you know um so i i I use that early on and yes maybe it's not the best move to put yourself out there but i use that early on for challenges reward challenges for tribe raids knowing that if you just make that suggestion first people are unlikely to say no until it gets to the point where it's like this guy (laughs) stop (laughs) doing all the fun stuff like send somebody else and then you see me instantly when i get shut down I instantly Marisha. turn and point to Marisha and I go, okay, cool, yeah. Marisha, why don't you go? Yeah. Because now then they're going to have to say no and say, why not Marisha? So for me, it's easy. Oh, no, Dino, let's send somebody else. Let's send someone new. Cool, valid. But now say no to Marisha. Why Why wouldn't? Why, why are you going to say no to Marisha now? There's no real reason. Um, so that's why I turned to instantly. So, yeah, it was definitely a mechanism and a conscious mechanism. And I was quite aware of like the potential repercussions. But at that stage, the target was so big. I was like, well, just go for it, dude. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, Corbus, do you know? I'm just gonna move to something Corbus is asking. By the way, Rick, Corbus was my former co-host, and now he's watching. And he's he's this is his first appearance that he's making because he knows you are on board here. But he's <laughs> asking, what do you think about the reward share? And I think he's referring to the fact that Dino was open to sharing one muffin with the other tribe. 
What, what did you think about that? Music? Oh, what about me? Yeah. Um, I thought if it was a U.S. season, I would expect Jeff to just be like, laugh at it. Like, no, what do you want the reward? Eh. But if Jeff said, okay, as a viewer, I'd go, oh, man, it must be rough out there. Like, they yeah. must be. So that's kind of where my head went. I was like, if Nico's letting them share, then I bet it's really rough conditions out there. Mm -hmm. Because I think you're silly not to share it as the tribe because you know the merge is soon. Kind of like Sean was so aggressive in that tribe. Well, I'm going, is he losing his mind to put a target? Or is he already thinking merge and like, maybe if I'm a jerk, I'm less of a target, you know? Uh, but but yeah, so my, my first thought was that it must be really rough out there if Nico's letting them do this. Um, yeah, but, yeah, but, but Nico, LaRue, roughness. everybody. But about that roughness, I mean, that challenge, it opens up with the first also. I'm looking at that challenge and I'm thinking, there's no way this challenge equates to that reward. I would have just been a Tyson or sitting on the sideline going, all this energy spent for a muffin and maybe some coffee is just not worth it. Oh, no. <laughs> coffee yeah. rewards, are the they last forever. You get like cups and stuff with it. Coffee and muffin rewards are the best rewards you can get. Oh, yeah, yeah, and muffin's like and, a and short and intake. Yep. I'll, I'll have you know, like Claudio, like for me personally, even if we went to a reward challenge and there was no reward, you were literally just playing for a win, nothing else, literally yeah. just a W, I would still go out there and give it my all. I'm that competitive. Like there is yeah. there is no ways I'm not competing for something. And maybe it's not a great trait, but like, um, but, but, but to Rick's points, like, yeah, I mean, th that was like amazing. That was way better than the Burroughs reward, like by far. Um, it lasted longer, it added variety, um, it was definitely, definitely worthwhile. Uh, there, there's very little out there that I wouldn't play for. I know, um, we st we were still drinking yeah. coffee from the <laughs> other <laughs> tribes' reward, <laughs> like God deep into my merge. <laughs> Hilgard saying smash them deserve a muffin for that summer attempt after getting <laughs> saved by Chappies. <laughs> I think Chappies I mean, deserved his share of the muffin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, Chappies Rick, you looks like Michael Phelps out there. I, I was saying that Kama, the oh, tribe sorry, I wasn't even... Sorry, Rick, Chappies, Chappies, or what? what is his second and third name? Water and Swim. Chappies, Water and yeah, Swim. Chappies, <laughs> Water, Swim. Wow. Francois, Water, Swim, Chapman. <laughs> good name. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Rick, you were saying we, we cut you off like three times there. Uh, just that, like, there was a, a tribal reward challenge that the other tribe won that was coffee that we were still drinking deep into the game. Like, day 30, we were still drinking that coffee after everyone else was long gone. It was weak, yeah. horrible coffee, but, like, anything that doesn't taste like water or rice. like spi I used to think spices were the dumbest reward ever, and now it's like, oh, my gosh. They're so important to make the rice manageable uh, day after day yeah. after day. Yeah. yeah. Course, that's a valid point. Uh, Aiden is asking the question, do you think the SA cast is playing an easier game compared to your experience on Ed Edge of Extinction, Rick, because they're allowed to bring their jackets? Also, I don't know if that's a fair question because Fiji versus Wild Coast, I mean, the one looks like a giant monster and the other one looks like a place in paradise. I, I don't know. I'm yeah, that's that exactly there. the thing. I mean, it's easy to look and be like, they have so many clothes. They have so many jackets. <laughs> like, this is insane. Uh, but but we got so lucky with weather. Like, typically, U.S. Survivor seasons, they do them back to back. And it's the odd number season comes first. And it's the rainy season. And it's mm -hmm. warm, but just like crazy rain. And then the second season, the even season's a drier season, but cold. Uh, and that's the one I was on. And I wouldn't trade that for anything. So I would much rather get less rain in Fiji with no rain jacket than what they were doing in the Wild Coast, I think. Like, we had beautiful, clear, blue water, sunny days. Uh, <laughs> again, you know, it depends on where you are. So I let let them have jackets. <laughs> well, Dino, how much how much rain was there? Because Carla said after she was voted out last week, she said she was just glad that she was voted out at that time because the next 10 days, it was consecutive rain. Yeah, I mean, we had already had a ton of rain. It was so hard to keep dry. And, I mean, all, all you smell like, because you, you, you want to wash your clothes, but you can never get them dry. 
And so you end up smelling like um, a smoky gym bag that's been left in the boot of your car for about three months, right? Because it's just so oh. damp, right? And so damn uncomfortable. And then that makes it so incredibly cold. Um, so like I say, I mean, we already had an insane amount of rain. And, and then by the time we left the game, I mean, look at the weather forecast. It was, I mean, I, I have no idea what we in store for. I mean, they must have been in absolute misery because the forecast did not look good. So like I say, we had a tough. And I'm sure what's coming is even tougher. All right. Well, let's let's talk about the forecast. And this one, this one looks better because we're going to talk about also, Rick, you're very good at giving forecasts, eh? aren't you? <laughs> you want to give the forecast? Because that's how you open up Edge of Extinction. Eh? <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm, people always think I'm a weatherman. I'm a newsman. Uh, I'm a news <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So do you want to you want to open up? Seeing as I mean, I'm going to take this opportunity. I don't. It's not every day I got a news anchor on here. So yeah, open up Golden Spear for us, please. Do your best shot. Let's hear it. Uh, okay. Dun, 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 dun. This just into the Survivor SA newsroom. It's time to judge your peer for the Golden Spear. And don't hey. forget, someone's got to lose. And that means the wooden spoon could come soon. And now <laughs> your host with the most, it's Claudio Barrero. <laughs> Dude. You Hello, first say that sound about to use it for everything, man. That was awesome. <laughs> That was good. Thank you very much, Rick. Okay, but on to more important things. Golden Spear for the episode six. Guys, candidates, let's hear the names. Throw them out there. Bada bing, bada boom, boom, boom. Dino first, Rick second. Let's hear this. And why? you got to say why you're giving the names out there. Um, there's, there's, there's a number of people. I think I think uh, there's no there's no overlooking Chappies and his heroics. Um, I think I, I don't think he deserves a Golden Spear. I think he deserves something else uh, that's not you know, game related, you know, like some sort of a, I don't know, a golden speedo or something for his Michael Falk's um, <laughs> <laughs> interpretation there. I mean, he was absolutely an absolute machine. So there's no ways we can get through the segment without, without bringing him up at least once, you know, um, the, the other candidates, I mean, I think more subtly, and I'm, uh, I've spoken about him a lot and you can hear I'm, I'm a massive fan, um, but Renee's just for his, his incredible social connections and, I'm not sure how aware the audience is at this moment. There's There's been so many um, inferences to how strong he is socially. I mean, his moments in the water with Anela, you could see, and, and that means he had so much pull in the new in the new tribe to send Anela as well. It just speaks to his social game. Him reconnecting with Amy, you know, uh, that coming up, it's, it's obviously quite an important thing. Um, he had his finger on the pulse um, the previous episode and, and, and this episode. So, I mean, for his social connections, I have to, I have to throw... Um, <laughs> and I uh, see uh, heel guards throwing Tyson up. Um, <laughs> I will, I will let you throw that golden spear in there. I will, in principle, I'm going to be emotional and say no Tyson. Um, actually, I mean, on that note, I think um, Kieran as well. I know Kieran. Kieran actually didn't want to, want to vote for me. He wanted the vote to go on to Santini, and I think he would have rather lost uh, Kian than than Santini because. I'd actually expressed an interest in working with them. Yeah. And Kieran was was stuck in this awkward place where, you know, Tevin and PK were in season six where Tevin was playing this game and not letting PK any room. And then Tevin ended up getting blindsided by his number one ally. And Kieran recognizes this. And instead of, you know, kicking a fuss and trying to get his way, he he gives his number one ally the 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 decision to, you know, the freedom to make that decision and guide it. And, and he supports that. And, Thus, he just further cements his his number one ally in the in the game. I think um, I don't know how much of that came across on screen, but I think that was an incredible, incredibly smart play by Kieran. Even though it hurt me, um, I think that's worth worth mentioning. Yeah, Rick, I know this one's going to seem outside the box, but I think Pinty um, was her impact on the game even this late after her elimination was clear. Uh, so I got to give it to Pinty this week. Uh, I'm, I'm just kidding. I've been, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I froze you guys up a little bit there. Uh, no, uh, normally, I would want to give it to Tyson uh, or Kieran. I feel like Dino did a great job making Kieran's case because he, he does seem like he's with kind of a, a wild card right now. And that could really pay off down the road uh, if there's someone that you can take deep that can win contests but that – might not be able to gather votes at the end. Like that sounds like a great person to go to the end with. 
Um, yeah. But I, I got to give it to Chappies. I mean, that was just really impressive. Uh, Tyson just seemed a little all over the place. Like it wasn't – It I, I didn't grasp like the clear strategic – decision of it so i'll just throw mm. it chappies way be because everyone else was talking about how great chappies was like if it had just been me seeing it but everyone was like he saved me i'm like okay good for but him yeah, but, but the timing of everything that he does is so significant for his game like you look at you know it's yeah. crazy about your game you know is your game was up and down up and down but it was so up and down that it became super consistent the others that <laughs> went off prior they were super high and then they just fell off the face of the earth whereas you were still it looked like you know there was something for you you were you were going through, you had your paddle out, the, the water, the wild coast waters were turbulent, but you were still steering it a little bit with your rudder. rudder. But then we're looking at uh, Chappies. He goes from being target number one, doing these antics and aerobics, and sure, it's not as, well, we don't know really, but it's not as strategic as what it seems in terms of game play, gameplay. But at the same time, you know, it just turns for him at the right time. The tribe swap, getting new people, seeing, oh, he's amazing. He's really good at challenges. Now, all of a sudden, being a challenge, challenge beast is something good because you're losing and you want something. So it's just funny how it's all worked in his favor, not discrediting everything that he's done. But at this moment in time, yeah. it's just looking so right for him. But there's, there's two ways you can look at it. And, and, I, and I feel for him because, um, I mean, jumping in, uh, saving is quite a, a selfless act in, in many ways. But something like that, as much as it's admirable, I mean, we, we're getting close to merge at this stage, and you're looking at that, and you're going like, how do you compete with that? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that can put a massive target on his back. So it was a completely selfless act. So from a game mechanic, it could work in his favor like very, very, very for a short period of time. Um, but the long impact of that could actually be, be negative. And that's why I think what he did is even more admirable. Um but, I mean, I don't know how this plays out. Uh, does does it hurt his game or, or doesn't it? Uh, I mean, if, for me, the way I think of things, I go like, I'm never going to outswim this guy. There's so many water challenges. I need to get him out, you know. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that impacts him. So Sheldon dropped a great great suggestion in there as well in, in Amy. I mean, Amy, for all the same reasons I've just mentioned about uh, Trinid, I mean, her, her social game has been, like, off the charts insanely good. I mean, to navigate all those tribals in the minority – and then to still have all these connections all over, I mean, she's well done to her as well, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think she's doing great jobs where she's she's in all the right conversations, but she's not the ringleader from a perception sort of point of view. Mm -hmm. I do want to say something with regards to, before we move on to possibly the last or the, the decision-making process, I a little shout out to Ponga. He's been one of our day ones and also Timo. They've been watching TNO from day one when we had, I think they were our only two viewers and now they're live with us with obviously you, Rick Devins and you, Dino. So thank you very much to them for joining hey, us. Thanks, guys. Um, but just to round off the Golden Spear then, we've had some good nominations. Can you come to a consensus as to who we're going to give this to? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, Dino. I, think, I, trust, I trust Dino's opinion. He was out there. <laughs> I think so. Look, I think there's, there's strong candidates for for like for Golden Spear this week, but I think um, you know Rick is a big advocate for what Chappies did, and and because there is no other superior award to the Golden Spear that can be given out at this time, I think he does deserve the top honors. I mean that that's available to us, unless you come up with a Golden Speedo. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think Chappies is is our guy. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. I'm going to do a little countdown. I think um, we might have just, Rick is having some real turbulence on his side with regards to the connection, but I'm going to do the countdown and I want to see you throw the golden spear and you're going to, you're going to give the award. You're ready. Oh, I thought I just give me a second. I think Rick has made an, a comeback. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> My computer died. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah I'll switch a room there. <laughs> Anyway, he's just, he's just um, upgraded. He had a little half time and he's taking a little boost. Okay, Rick, we were saying we're going to do the countdown. I'm going to go three, two, one, and then you're going to throw your golden spear and you're both going to say who you're giving it to. You ready? Yeah. All right, cool. Three, two, one. Yeah. Sure, guys, the, the, the energy was quite weak there. <laughs> Are we <laughs> I mean, Rick, Rick's sound is out there, but geez, you know, you, you got to put some more oomph in there. 
You ready? I'm gonna do that Sorry, again, man. I'm not. I'm not a physical phenomenon. It's a bit challenging <laughs> for me. I'm exhausted from that swim yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Let's hear it. Chapeys. <laughs> there we go. That's the one. That's the one. Okay, we're gonna move on to the wooden spoon nominations. Rick, I don't know if we can hear you. You can go first. Let's hear your nomination for the wooden spoon. I, I, I am a big fan of this person. Like, I, I'm a huge fan. I think this person is terrific. But, and I think she played the, I think she should have played the idol when she played it. I totally support it, but it was the wrong time. And she let Tyson find an idol right in front of her. Going to give the wooden spoon to Santony just for that, even though overall I think she's a Golden Spear player. Okay, yeah. that's a good observation, yeah. That that's a really good observation, and um, I think I think it's very true. I mean, like she 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 admitted in the game, like how does she let that get swapped from underneath her? She had like a good nine days to to found that idol with that clue, and 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 she didn't, you know. And then it gets swapped from under her within minutes of getting to that beach, you know, by the same person she gave a clue to like a week or nine days ago. So, um, it is it is it is an interesting one, and and I know I. I I love Santini to bits like 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 um like Rick does. So it would it would be sad to give her a wooden spoon, but um yeah, for his reasons I have got to agree that, that she would be a candidate along with me, I mean the boot. <laughs> I mean <laughs> getting boots from the game and not, not having maybe like had like some sort of wild explosive demise that would have been fully entertaining the way I would have loved to have gone out in the game. You know, I, I feel like I deserve a wooden spoon nomination at the very least for, for not going out in a ball of, of, of fury, you know? <laughs> Rick, I, I, that even though I think it plays against you when you play an idol incorrectly, like Anthony did again, I support her playing that idol a hundred times out of a hundred times. I think it was the right move. Never go home with an idol in your pocket. So yeah, as much as I'm holding it against her in, in my nomination, I think she, that was great. And I'm a big fan. Okay. Yeah. So you nominate Santini. Dino, obviously second nomination throws himself in there. Is there anyone else worthy to get their name thrown out there? Or cause you, you did touch on the fact that Tyson, there's no real strategy, even though he comes out on top here, he gets his man, Dino, you know, he's come off the previous episode doing really well. Is is he not being too strategic in the fact that he's aligning himself with Santini, making her feel super unsafe, and she knows now that he has an idol? Sorry, I, I missed the first part of that, uh, Claudio. I was just having like one or two sound issues there. Uh, who are you referring to? I was saying with, with regards to Tyson, uh, Rick mentioning the fact that there was no real, from a strategic point of view, we didn't really see some impetus there in terms of what he was doing moving forward. But when we look at it, you know, he finds the idol in front of Santoni, but then he also makes her feel unsafe, unsafe to the point that she still plays her idol. So now he's got this player running loose in the game. He's already known for like playing on the fine line. Who knows he's got an idol. So how detrimental will that be for him? The, the, the counter, sorry, yeah, the counter to that would be that, hey, well done to him. Somebody that they've got their eye on, that's a potential next boot, has just had their idol flushed. They're aware of your power in the game. Um, fine. I mean, they they saw you. There was nothing he could do that, that, I mean, he found it in front of her. I mean, that wasn't like him giving that up freely to her, that information. But, um, and, and again, for a second week in a row, even, even if you want to question his motives, the target that Tyson wants to go home goes home, even though two of his alliance members wanted a different target. I mean, he's he's got that pull with them that they go with him. So, I mean, I, I think that speaks to, to to the relationships he's got in the game. And um, yeah, flashing out an idol is is great. I definitely I, I don't see him anywhere near a wooden spoon this week, in, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. And he's closer to a golden spear. He found an idol. He flushed an idol. He got his guy out. Um, I think it was a really good episode for Tyson. Cool. And then uh, Hilgaard saying Warda for her outburst at Tribal didn't really help her. Now it's revealed that Anela is her number one enemy. Is that wise for someone to do that at Tribal? I have to go help my daughter at the party. Can I be, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a valid reason. <laughs> that's, that seems very important. Yes, Dino. Um, so, so speaking to Warda, I think it's a tricky one. She's now just been reunited with with two of her homies, like a replacement for Carla. We know she's fiercely loyal, so 
you know, she'll be fiercely loyal to to Tyson in particular. Um, so with with Anela going to that tribal, Anela being safe and him not having a vote and all the power being in her corner at that tribal, I think it was a moment for her to be able to like let off a bit of steam and frustration. And while it does draw very clear lines in the sand, she's on the right side of that line at the moment. So I don't think it, it, it's as detrimental to her game as what it could be. Um, is it is it is it a good idea to to have emotional outbursts or I don't want to call it an emotional outburst, it, it, but is, is it a good idea to always speak your mind so freely and with so much passion? Um, maybe not necessarily, but um, I, I don't think like the timing of it and the circumstances surrounding it. I don't think it's going to hurt her game. Okay, all right. And I think that's a fair point. Uh, it's just interesting that she's, again, one of the few that did benefit because of the tribe shuffle, but going back to some old members. So job done there, Rick. <laughs> yes, catastrophe avoided. Uh, I'll, I'll take care <laughs> Golden Spear. Golden Spear. Golden Spear, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, we've 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 just got you back, and it seems like we've lost Dino. Um, okay, well, we we need to give the wooden spoon. You've gone with Santini. I think I'm happy with that one. Are you ready to do the little countdown? Yeah. All right, three, two, one. Boop, boop, boop. Santini. You gotta say the name. Say the name. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> and you know, he really didn't want to do this. <laughs> Do you know we've just given our wooden spoon? Who you want to give it to? Um, wait, wait. Who did you give the wooden spoon to? I gave I gave it to my very good redheaded friend. Oh my word, that's so sad. Look, like I say, personally, I would have probably given it to myself and uh, added it to my collection of wooden spoons. Um, but um, I don't know. I think uh, for this, for this, I really. Uh, I get what Rick's saying. I love Santini to bits, and she's played an incredible game. And her decision to play the idol was absolutely the 100% right decision. But in this context, I'll, I'll agree and wooden spoon my girl Santini. Don't, don't feel too bad for her because she was on a run and she nearly won three golden spears in a row. She had two out, two out, like two out of three, so not bad. So I mean, we've got to counterbalance this. She's doing better than most out there. Okay, cool. So we've got our golden spear well, out the way. We've got a wooden but, spoon. But, now she just got one one wooden spoon from Rick Devins, which counteracts every golden spoon ever because she loves Rick Tippett. <laughs> so that's like getting a world a lifetime supply of wooden spoons. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I got quite a few wooden spoons over my survivor career. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Storms brewing. This is where we make our predictions. We give our forecast as to what we think might be coming. So you know, let's hear what you think is going to happen. Who's well insulated? Who's driving home? And also, at the end of it, please tell us your winner picks from what you can see at the moment. Okay, cool, cool. So, um, you know, at this at this stage, and I said it, a tribal council merges uh, merges is not a million years away. It's it's on the horizon. So, uh, I think it's you know that's that's in the not so distant future. Um, immediately. I mean, I look at the other tribe and the skill sets they've got. Um, they're a strong tribe. They're, there's, you know, I, I hope that, you know, for the sake of Zamba 3.0 and for the sake of uh, the likes of like um, Kian and Santini, that it's a more puzzle intensive challenge than a, a physical one uh, to give them a, a fighting chance. Um, otherwise, you know, Vuna, current Vuna has a bit of a, uh, an advantage physically in challenges at the moment. Um, so I do worry for for Santini, um, who I've come to love at this stage, um, and yeah, I, I think it's it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how Chappies is received. I know we saw that moment of him running around, but it's going to be interesting to see the impact that you know those heroic moments have um, on the game. You know, he's he's lost his number one in Santini, who's who's been, you know, it looks like they've got a very special bond, um, and he's he's been taken away from that. He's with a lot of people that, you know, in, in Sean and Amy that, that he's been with for a while, but I don't know where they really stand with each other at this stage. So um, 
I see, you know, if 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 Runa two point go to or Runa three point go to trouble, I see absolute chaos. Um, if if Zamba three point go to trouble, I see um, I see one of our favourites going home potentially. Oof. It's a heavy forecast, Rick. Yeah. Um, well, the good news, you know, and this is probably not great news because I'm a lot less connected to the game. I see Santini bouncing right back. I think she could easily have a Golden Spear performance next week and turn the tables on the likes of a Tyson because I think it's time for the Tysons and Shans and Chappies and Smash these big physical threats to be really scared. Uh, the merge is obviously right there. I think it'd be a shock above all shocks for any sort of swap before then uh, at this point. So I think everyone's looking around and going, who's going to win all these challenges? Like, Not only do you want to win to get to the end, but you want to win to say that you wore the necklace and you don't want Chappies to win five times or Tyson to win five times and you to win nothing. Um, so I think you look around and it's like, who? Even though to win a lot of immunities uh but yeah i think those guys need to be watch out uh i think women are also smart and and also willing to do what it takes i i think i'd be real scared if the guys i if we were still in the game i'd be real scared if i was in all these individual immunity threats yeah that's a valid point now guys Final winner pick predictions. Are you guys brave enough to do that? Can you give? Can you throw one name out there? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna throw a specific name out for for a winner pick. But um, I'm gonna give a cluster of names as to who who I'm loving and and supporting. I'm giving just one. Okay. Go for it. Amy. Ooh, Amy. Nah. That's a good shot. That is a good shot. I like what she's doing, and she can lie with a straight face. I think a lot of poker experience there, so be careful. I think she'd do wild boss and Rob and Tyson and all the rest of them. You know what? I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you what my feeling was when I left the game and, and what I saw in the game. There were there were there were a couple of standout players for me while I was there, and that was um, Renier, Kieran, and Anesu. Like their social games are so great, and I, I spent a lot of time with them, so they'd be front of mind at that stage. But I definitely felt leaving the game and, and I said it to to this person when I when I left. I said, You've got every single tool you need to go and win it and I hope you do. And that was um to Kieran. So if I'm gonna put my weight behind anybody, it's gonna be behind the person I uh, I said that about in the game. And I I'm, and it's not just because he gave me a nice voting confessional either, I can promise you. <laughs> what did you think about that voting confessional though when he did say that? Because he said, you know, potentially you could have gone on to win the game. Did you think that was just like a nice thing to say, or did you think he genuinely believed that? Um, you're gonna have to ask Kieran that one day. Um, but I, I right, let's I, hope it's not I, that I, soon. I, I like, if it's based I like on your be, prediction. Yeah, no, no, I like to I like to I think that he's I mean Kieran's a pretty genuine guy. Um so I think anything that, that comes out of his mouth is, is him speaking his truth. So um, even if it's not, I'm going to go run with that answer anyway because it makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's amazing. Gentlemen, I want to say thank you very much for joining the show tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you would, please tell the people who are watching to not forget to subscribe. I don't know if I phrased that correctly. Can, can you give a little shout out to say subscribe to TNO? Let's hear that because I'm trying to get better at that. Uh, Christy always keeps telling me, no, I need to get better at that. Uh, I wouldn't know how to do that, but I can tell you that I was I auditioned many, many times uh, to be on Survivor, and I never got on. And then I found TNO, I subscribed, and then like the next season I was on Survivor. And I don't think that's much of a coincidence. I'm just saying, you know. So 100% subscribe to TNO. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's a, a good story. <laughs> yeah, it's a good luck job. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, it doesn't help much with gameplay, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend's on the couch laughing at that. Thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Rick? Come on. I don't know what's going on with you there, but we are seeing your beautiful face. Look at this, man. It's charming. You can see that that smile carried him so far in the game. I think if there's anything you can learn from TNO, get your teeth white and smile like Rick Devins, maybe grow the beard, and you will go far.
and you all go far. I don't know, Dino, are you still there? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm here. I think Rick, Rick, Rick is stuck in a pose. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a way to finish that. Yeah, okay. Oh, he's, he's back? No? He's back? Takes. I don't think. Uh, I think he's struggling with connection a bit. The phone isn't working out uh, as well as the computer did, guys. I'm I'm catching about twenty five. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> no okay. problem. Uh, he's he's out of here. Not a not a bad way to go out. I mean, a hell of a smile, eh, Dino? Look, Jez, Joseph, thank you very much for joining us. He said uh, he enjoyed this, and Dino, I hope you enjoyed it because this is this your last one for the day. Or you still got another one planned, maybe in Australia or something. No, no, this is the last one for the day, dude, and um. Yeah, it's 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 so good to finally be on here with you, man. Um, for those who don't know, Claudio and I go go way back, and we've had such a good time. So to sit next to next to a friend and chat about this, it's been a great experience. So thanks, dude. But let's let's actually before we go, we still got something. Also, once upon a island is on the show, guys. Give a little shout out if you haven't subscribed to their channel. We cover a lot of US content, super super great stuff. And um, yeah, thank you very much for rocking up yet again. But it needs yeah, to be guys. said that Dino. You you mentioned that you know you found Tino. You know, so just so you guys know, Dino is he's a port he's got Portuguese heritage. I've got Port Portuguese heritage. I'm struggling to speak right now. It's been a bit of a long day for me, and not as long as Dino. But he entered a couple of times, and I entered a couple of times, and through that process, obviously, he said he found Tino, you know, and then we found out we had mutual friends. Yeah, it was super cool. And then I started harassing you on Twitter, and so you became my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. And then they had to choose one Portuguese guy. And, you know, fantastic job. And you, and like I said, dude, you were the rootable underdog that everyone likes. And like Rick's already said, a big shot for coming back on future seasons. Yeah. And even though, you know, that's not something you should, you say, you, not something you're planning to do, but um, would you be open to that if it were to happen? Yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Also, birthday hike hey. happening again soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what an accident. Sounds good. I'm so keen, so keen. Yeah, again, dude, Cloudy, thanks so much, dude. It's it's always a pleasure. Love to you know, I love your content. Um honestly, this has been fun. Teresa and Carla had like the most fun last week. It's definitely something that you do and you do well. So yeah, keep it up, dude. And um yeah, hopefully you'll have me back again at some point um to get some wrong opinions and views on the game. I wish uh, Rick was still here to give another forecast, making that prediction. That would have been lovely. Dino coming back in the future. If you guys want to see Dino back in the future, just tell us and, you know, we'll make it happen. Dino, thank you very much for jumping on. Seems like everyone's enjoyed it. And also, one hashtag, the Dino Pack. Yeah, oh, thanks, you guys. Thanks, little... too. Thanks. Hey, the Dino Pack, no, no. yeah? Yeah, is that a little inside joke there? Or is something you want to share? Or is he just referring to, um, what's he referring to there? No, it's just one of the hashtags that that, that they came up with um, at the beginning of the at the beginning of the season, which is quite cool. But yeah, I mean, thanks to everyone who tuned in live to watch this; it's super cool. And those who are watching at all hours of the morning, um, it's been an absolute pleasure. So thank you to everyone. Look, and our fans are already saying you're natural, so I think it's it's gonna be it's gonna be it's a done deal. Dino's definitely coming back, definitely coming back. And now <laughs> only too privileged, man. Sweet. Cool. Wait, Have an Dino, can we see Kirsten? I want to see Kirsten. Get, everyone get to see if she's happy to jump on. No? No, no, she's run away. She's she's going to bed, bro. <laughs> it's, it's like past that bedtime here, bro. It's a Friday night. What do you think this is? You think I'm like sub 30 these days? No way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, let's are you ready to kill it? Are you ready to kill it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's let's get going. Shame. I don't think people want to just see us uh, spitting banter at each other <laughs> for, 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 for time to time. Um, but yeah, All right, everybody. Have a great evening. Cheers. Bye. We out. Cheers. Cheers.